Now, the president of the Philippines, Rodrigo Duterte, counts a controversial figure and is well known for making remarks many consider obscene. Take a listen. You must be respectful. Mr. Obama, you can go to hell. Mayor Duterte would ask only five questions to prove that you're stupid. Ambassador in your back. Do you see it? I do not have any master. If you can say one bad thing about me, I can give you. Well, the president of the Philippines, Rodrigo Duterte, has given an exclusive interview to RT's Marina Kosreva. Marina joins me now live in the studio after hot footing it back from the Philippines. Uh, Marina, I suppose, other than perhaps Donald Trump, Barack Obama over the last few months, one of the people who's been on our television screens all around the world more than any more, any others, is Rodrigo Duterte. You spoke to him directly. How did you find him? Well, he did appear to be exactly the way we saw him right there. He mm. was direct, honest, and determined, really, not to allow anyone to tell him what to do in his own country. And you could tell that this is something that really infuriates him, especially when the criticism is coming from the U.S. or someone who doesn't really understand the issues in his own country mm. and what he has to do to defeat them. Let's have a look. Okay. Every time the United States criticizes us or reprimands us, did always connect it with a connective sentence that uh, if you do not do this, if, if you do not do that, or if you do this and we do not like it, we will cut the assistance. That every time, several past presidents, do you know that America is not a signatory of the International Criminal Court? And here is a guy threatening me with a uh, prosecution. The <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> you, you must be crazy, you know. Well, Mr. Duterte has definitely appeared to soften his criticism of the U.S. since the presidential election. And he did say that he finds Donald Trump to be a man that he could potentially work with and even build a friendship. But for now, he is shifting his focus more towards Russia and China. I had a talk in that meeting in Laos uh, for the ASEAN. I personally requested to talk to the Prime Minister of Russia, maybe we did. So I told him my problem. And I said, you know, I am not asking for anything. We can survive with nothing. But I just want you to know that I want to be closer to you and China. Because I do not like what is happening to us. Marina, I suppose that leads to the point, doesn't it, about agreements with the U.S. Where does that leave Washington? Absolutely. Well, the thing is that uh, Mr. Duterte doesn't like being blackmailed. And he said in case the U.S. blocks any arms sales, he doesn't care mm. because he can easily have another agreement either with China or with Russia. In fact, he said when it comes to Russia, he can already get a buy one, get one free arms deal. So it doesn't really bother him at all. During the last day where he saw me, he, he went out of his way to shake hands with me. Uh, I said, Mr. President, oh, yeah, it's fine. And then he smiled and shook my hands. He said, I will wait for you in Korea, uh, in Russia. Yes, of course, but not, not now because uh, I cannot stand cold. Well, he is planning a visit uh, in the next coming months, even though it's too cold, as he said it. Nice. And actually, you can uh, watch more of the interview and what he said about Donald Trump, uh, Barack Obama, and brother president, as he called him. And by that, he means Vladimir Putin mm. right now. You've become world famous for quite a number of sharp statements, and some people have even gone as far as to say that they're politically incorrect. Why did you choose this style of, uh, this style of conducting politics? Well, I, I never, uh, there was not an ambition. I never decided to be a, an international figure. I just have wanted to be just a mayor here, but uh, fate uh, somehow changed the course of my life. Now, foreign policy. Fundamentally, the foreign policy of the Philippines follows the foreign policy of 
the United States. Why? Well, we were occupied by Spain and made a colony for 400 years. But uh, we were ceded to the Americans and they occupied my country for 50 years. Finally, we had our uh, independence after a bloody revolution and after a s several massacres. But and these are the things that uh, they just, I said, didn't even bother to apologize. But at the same time, America helped uh, the Philippines gain its independence in 1946 after yes. uh, Japan's occupation of got away. So do you think in a way you should be grateful to them or do you think that the West is using their allies? Well, if you're an American in front of me, I would say now to you, you want me to thank you for occupying my country? I said, you lived on the fat of the land for 50 years. You gave us our independence. Well, I'm sorry. If the previous presidents were just kowtow and follow what American says, not me. Not me because I know my history and I still have this uh, hurt. Is the, is, was that hurt what made you call President Obama no. what you called him? I do not like to be ordered. But you know, even in the matter of uh, uh, the purchase of arms, uh, there was this, uh, we were negotiating until a few days. And one senator stood up and said that uh, the Philippines has uh, a record of human rights violation. We will suspend the arms. Go good. It is never a crime to protect a race. It's a self-preservation thing. And you trivialize it with the prosecution and mentioning about the cutting of the assistance that we get. So clearly you're leaning closer to an alliance yes. more towards China and Russia rather than yes. the U.S. As of now, I just also told President Putin, you know, I just want to be friends, to show to the world that I am not limited to a few countries that I have to interact with the rest of the world because we are a sovereign state. And we have to do business and to have diplomatic relations with everybody. And if there is good to it, then I thank God. Well, since you mentioned business and cooperation, can I just find out what the status on the defense cooperation agreement is between the Philippines and Russia right now? I am not ready for military alliances because you have a treaty that was signed in the 50s. But I am ready to cooperate with my new friends, China and Russia, to make this world more peaceful. U.S. decided to cancel the uh, procurement of uh, weapons. And I said, I have a friend who has plenty. As a matter of fact, he's selling it Buy one, take one. Why don't they do? But polls in your country show that uh, most of your citizens support an alliance with the U.S. Yes. Yeah. Still, so how are you planning to? Well, because because uh, having been a colony for uh, 50 years, it should not surprise you. It's ingrained in the genealogy of the Filipinos. But little by little, I've been telling them I made this decision because. But if, uh, I think the, the, the Filipinos know the reason in their heart why. Because I have been very vocal and used the strongest terms when I said we are not uh, a nation uh, of beggars. You appear to soften your criticism when it comes to the U.S. after the U.S. presidential elections, after it became clear that Donald Trump would be the next president. Do you think that you could be friends with Donald Trump and maybe your relationship would well, change? There is, uh, I'm not at liberty to make it public, but there are feelers uh, now, uh, even uh, uh, retired generals. And uh, they wrote me a long letter, and the last sentence uh, is that there is no doubt in our minds that we, ca we can be f great friends again and reset the whole thing. That was my 
slogan, sloganeering when I was campaigning, change.